Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Everything Wrong with Politics, the panel show that believes political jokes should be used for comedy instead of being elected into high office. <laughs> Tonight, our two teams will become the leaders of brand new political parties. The only hitch is they don't know which ones yet. That's up to our audience to decide. The teams will then compete in a series of improvised games before the audience, or the electorate, as we like to call them, will uh, choose which one of them becomes our new government. Now, just when you thought elections couldn't inflict any more misery on the world, here we are. <laughs> so, before we begin, would you please welcome the teams. On my left, party leader Gareth Johnson, deputy leader Emily Pugh, and treasurer Chris Barnett. <laughs> and on my right, party leader Brian Murray, deputy leader Matthew Doherty, and treasurer Alistair Sanderson. <laughs> So, over to our audience. We need some names for our parties. Dungeons and Dragons party. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons we have there. Another... The Three Bears. The Three Bears. <laughs> Bear Necessities. Three Bears. Three Bears party, we'll call them. Three Bears. Right, so we have Brian, Matt and Alistair for the... Three Bears. Bear Three Bears party. I'm going to write it down. There's a man who's not taking no for an answer. Three <laughs> Bears. <laughs> And we have Gareth, Emily, and Chris for the Dungeons and Dragons party. So let's begin. Our first round is called Party Manifesto, and this is played by the party leaders. This is a chance for them to introduce their parties and to outline their key policy pledges. Uh, Gareth, you are up first, so will you please introduce the Dungeons and Dragons party? Yes, I'd like to say that I am the leader of the Dungeons and Dragons party. And if you vote for us, then you will feel like you have rolled a 20 on a d20 and scored a critical hit with your vote. Now, we absolutely will encourage that in all schools there is compulsory teaching of magic spells. And not just simple ones like magic missile, like the really good impressive ones that have colours everywhere and everything. We also believe anyone should be able to be a thief if that's on their character sheet. If it's not on your character sheet and you try and pickpocket someone, then frankly you should be arrested. But if you quite clearly put it on your character sheet, I think that's fine. Thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, gentlemen of the opposition, any questions about that manifesto? Oh, this is like shooting fish in a barrel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just a bit, a bit nasal. Here, so I'll take some water. How do you hope to ever implement any of your policies if you're like eternally stuck in your bedroom with your smelly socks? You're never going to get out to do anything, are you? No, you see, that, that, that's a stereotype. And if there's one thing I'm 100% against, it's lazy stereotypes of Dungeons & Dragons players. <laughs> You're never going to get out to do anything, are you? Like, unless mum makes you some sandwiches. Well, that, actually, they're very good sandwiches. They're cheese and pickle, and that's my favourite, so that's absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, Brian, over to you. Would you please introduce the Three Bears party? I would indeed, Dario. So, once upon a time, <laughs> there was a really lovely political party, and if you're sitting comfortably, I'll patronise you. <laughs> there was a big, brave, strong daddy bear. Let's call him me. <laughs> there was a mummy bear. That's you, Matt. <laughs> and there was a little baby bear. It's Alistair. Aww. No, actually, don't. He's a bit of a bastard, really. So, <laughs> so we have formed the Three Bears Party because we think Every policy should be not too right-wing, not too left-wing, <laughs> just right in the middle. <laughs> a bit like the Liberal Democrats, but with a bit of charisma. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little bit dry here. Could I just... Um... Mm. No, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's better. That one's been stolen, by the way. Has it? <laughs> this one. Yeah. And I was spashing out. <laughs> Well, thanks very much. I have to say, Goldilocks once broke into my house. I thought, never mind the porridge, where's the bloody video? <laughs> and that was just right. So vote for the Three Bears Party. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons Party, your thoughts? We're not that impressed with your comments towards Goldilocks. And, and you support thieves? Is that all? If it's on their character card! 
Christmas. <laughs> I think, frankly, over there with their differing opinions, you would vote in a coalition of chaos if you were to vote these people in. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much, party leaders. Uh, now we found out a bit about our party. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry. Yes, we'll right. Keep no, some more water. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so let's take a quick poll from the audience. So just for the front row, sat over there, not including Tech Boy over there. Uh, give us a cheer if you're thinking of voting for the Dungeons and Dragons party. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> Think I know which way this one's going. But uh, votes for the Three Bears party. Yeah. All right. Round two is called "They Have My Full Support," and this is played by the deputy leaders. Now I'm going to ask them to step out of the room in turn, and the audience is going to suggest a scandal or a faux pas in which they've become embroiled. The deputy leader will re-enter, the party leader will make a short statement on their behalf, pledging them their full support, and then the opposition will have a chance to cross-examine. So, Emily, you're going to be first. Would you please step outside? Try not to fall over. So, any suggestions for a scandal or faux pas that Emily has committed? It doesn't have to be related to Dungeons & Dragons, it could be anything you like. She ate her cat. She ate her cat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ate her cat, okay. Uh, Chris, would you like to go and get Emily back again? Thank you. Uh, welcome back, Emily. Uh, Gareth, I'm sure you'd like to say a few words before the opposition have their say. Mm. Now, a, a lot of people are going to call this quite a, a reprehensible crime, but I, I do think that we need to put it in context. I mean, she was hungry. Of course she was. <laughs> and, you know, when there's not too much around, you just see what's there in front of you. And I think we just need to pause for a moment and consider after the pause um, what we are going to do about this matter. We want a perfectly good answer from you. A perfectly good a answer. A perfectly good answer. Oh. Before she gets it, for I think we've blown the other half of the game. Not that it matters, gentlemen, but if you'd like to ask her any questions. <laughs> completely ruined it. Um, I've, got a, I've got a feline that it's... Uh... <laughs> Stop littering the place with misinformation and get to the point. Well, maybe you've got a vague idea, Emily, of what it is you've done. Oh, very well done. Right, uh, Matthew, it's your turn. So if you like to step outside. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Matthew. All right. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Uh, right. Presuming his little legs have got him to the end of the corridor. Uh, any suggestions for what Matt might have done? Ethnic cleansing of the Wombles. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really disagree with the crowd on that one. Really? You can't disagree with that? <laughs> All right. Not, not happy with that. And any other suggestions? <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think that's it. Uh, Alistair, if you'd like to go and get him. Goodness me. Alistair, if you'd like to go and... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you sick man, man. <laughs> Good luck, Brian. Before we go any further, <laughs> I'd just like to say that we have rehearsals this afternoon. Yes, we rehearse improv. And what I was caught doing this afternoon... I'd make your hair curl, so this can't be any worse. Come on, it's... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think it might. <laughs> uh, yes. Right, Brian, um, obviously quite a uh, serious issue we've got to deal with here, but I'm sure you'll do your best to defend your deputy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky one. I'll be honest. It's been a bit of an anus cerebralis for Matt, who, uh, contrary to the beliefs of the Three Bears Party, doesn't do things by halves. Um, and uh, he is basically, obviously, you may not recognise him. He's he's had plastic surgery. Uh, the man who was formerly the uh, the butcher of Wimbledon Common um, <laughs> has almost completely. <laughs> Serious matter. <laughs> He's had to virtually completely shave his head so he cannot be identified. <laughs> Audio footnote. Matt has very weird hair. <laughs> so, um, he's thought of going to a number of places uh, to, to escape uh, justice. Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe up the Orinoco. 
Um, but no, we must give it to Matt. He has returned here to face justice in front of the International Court of, of Human Rights. <laughs> For and 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 furry animals. Um, it's it's not just the death toll, the sheer unimaginable death toll that we have to think about here. But also, since Matt committed his terrible, terrible crime, the amount of litter. <laughs> No wombles were harmed. <laughs> no wombles were harmed at, at, at all. Uh, uh, okay, well, there's no need to finish the sentence there. Uh, okay. Thank you, Brian. Opposition, anything? Thank you, no qualms, young man. Do you not care if you're underground or overground? <laughs> you're nothing more than a common criminal. <laughs> oh. uh, Matt. Any ideas <laughs> what you might have done? Right well, I, it's, I'm having sort of several rather vivid mental pictures of um, <laughs> rather extreme, mainly sexual acts with the uh, wobbles. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Bulgaria, like Orinoco, both wobbles. Yeah. Um, it wasn't wobbles, we were complaining about it. <laughs> Yeah, it includes the one. We only heard about the death toll. We didn't know what happened before. <laughs> <laughs> My sickness knows no bounds. Come on, and I'm a friend of yours, aren't I? Um, no, I don't. It's still Wombles Cape that I've massacred. Maybe a. Close enough that was the ethnic cleansing of the Wombles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I did it, yes. Uh, right, well, they both got it right, so we're going to have to pick a winner. Now, in the interests of equal representation, uh, I'm going to select a member from our audience who represents the diverse cross-section of our society. So, uh, white bloke in the front row there. <laughs> <laughs> who won? Who won? Oh, oh, the Wombles! The Wombles! <laughs> Very well done, Matt. Not the Wombles, but well done. Uh, round four is called Fake News and is sponsored by the Daily Mail. Uh, now, each of the party leaders is going to make a short speech. Now, in that speech, there are four statements. Two of them are true, two of them are false. The opposing party will then respond and identify which they think is the truth and which is the fake news. Gareth, would you like to present your speech, please? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. Now, if there's one thing we in the Dungeons and Dragons party believe fervently in, it's the environment. Because we've only got the one Earth. Well, I mean, actually, with, with D&D, we have got, got five or six in the multiverse. But in, in terms of actual physical existent Earths, we've only got the one. And so we feel passionate about the environment. In fact, we were talking to an astronaut who was looking down on the Earth from space and the state of it would have made him cry, but as we all know, it is impossible to cry in space due to the lack of gravity. Now, we believe that we must curb our electricity consumption because electricity consumption has more than doubled across the globe in the last 10 years, so we need to get this under control. As a result of our lax environmental controls, thunderstorms are rampant. So rampant that the Earth suffers from roughly 760 thunderstorms every hour. And as a result of all this, the biggest tragedy is that it is estimated that roughly 3,000 species of fish became extinct during the year 2012. Thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, opposing team. All right, so chaps. Let, let's get this right. You are planning to put Middle Earth back in the candle power age, are you? Ignoring <laughs> all functional electricity just so you can save those 3,000 fish species, which I believe is actually quite probably a true fact and quite a tragedy in this modern world. Okay, I think that's plausible. I like the idea of rampant thunderstorms. So. <laughs> That's your business, none of us. 
my sister's curry last night. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of electricity in my bedroom, and not just when I take this jumper off. <laughs> um, I, I, I can also, I'm, I'm looking at the team here, I can also well believe that the amount of energy the world has consumed has doubled in the last 10 years. That, that could be possible. It's frightening, but it's possible. Um, I think the idea that you can't cry in space and the rampant thunderstorms can't be true then. So you thought you were going to do badly in that round? Yes. You were right about one thing. <laughs> um, and uh, just that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. all wrong. All completely all wrong, wrong, I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, it is true that the Earth suffers roughly 760 thunderstorms every hour, and it is true that it is impossible to cry in space due to the lack of gravity. Uh, it is not true that global electricity consumption across the globe has doubled in the last 10 years, and it is not true that roughly 3,000 species of fish became extinct in 2012. Well, all I can say is thank goodness um, for that. I'm glad we got that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as bad as we thought. Yeah. Uh, you might be better at trying to flummox the other team, so Brian, could we have your speech, please? Ah, right, okay, well, thank you. Well, obviously, it's been a, a very uh, interesting week in the news. The new Wonder Woman movie uh, is out, but did you know that the man who invented Wonder Woman's lasso of truth also invented the lie detector. Um, it's been a week uh, with some uh, work-related problems. A US Navy jet pilot has been uh, facing a court-martial uh, for using the vapour trail from his jet to draw a penis in the sky. Um, <laughs> I've always wanted to be a jet pilot and I had no idea they had a button for that. You're kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the BBC has been in trouble. As you may know, they've tried to remake Porridge. It's not doing terribly well. But there's a leaked memo uh, that was released on Wednesday showing that they're still planning Series 2, but what they're going to do is replace the lead star Kevin Bishop. So far, replacements proposed in the leaked memo are Hugh Grant, Christopher Biggins, and Nazanin Zagari Ratcliffe. So the... Um, <laughs> Thank you. That one. <laughs> one person read the news this yeah, week. Exactly. That punchline took longer to write <laughs> than my universal credit. Okay. Um, now, where was I? Okay, so uh, stuff in the news. Oh, yes, sorry. And it's also been a bad week for a meteorologist from the American Weather Station headquarters of the United Counties of Kentucky. Um, he's been caught issuing meteorological reports in which he has repeatedly referred to particularly thin and wispy cirrus clouds as Donald's after the president's haircut. <laughs> yeah, he's actually, he has actually been found out and he's been publicly censured on uh, Donald Trump's Twitter account for that. Um, so I think those are, yeah, so those are, my, those are my four facts. Thank you very much, Brian. Over to the Dungeons and Dragons party. What do you think was true and what was false? Well, quite frankly, I think that Brian would not have gone to the bother of making up such a specific location for the meteorologist <laughs> who had the, the Donald Trump hair remark. So I'm going to say that that is true because I simply don't think that Brian would have made up that location. Um, I do not believe that anyone would be so reckless as to create a penis vapour trail. I, I mean, in the sky with a, um, <laughs> with, with a jet plane. Um, I also believe that the person who created Wonder Woman's Lasso of Truth was indeed the inventor of the lie detector, and thereby, by a process of elimination, I believe that Brian's porridge replacements, which frankly is a disgrace from that party over there, is just <laughs> fake news that he's trying to throw about to discredit porridge. Thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, two right. Well done. Oh, very good. <laughs> Uh, can, I, can I just say, you should have been able to get the location because the American Weather Station headquarters for the United Counties of Kentucky stands for all shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, so yes, it is true that uh, the man who invented Wonder Woman also invented the lie detector. It is true that a US Navy fighter pilot di was disciplined for drawing a penis in the sky. Absolutely right. Uh, it is not true that a meteorologist has been criticised for naming cirrus clouds after Donald Trump's hair. And it is not true about the remake of Porridge. Uh, so the Dungeons & Dragons team win that one. Well done. <laughs> Now, round five is called Corporate Sponsor, and this is played by the party Treasurers. So, to support their very expensive campaigns, our parties are about to welcome new financial partners, which the Treasurers will announce. Can I have a suggestion, please, of a new sponsor for the Dungeons & Dragons party? 
Sports Direct. Sports Direct. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we'll go with that one. Uh, and can I also have a suggestion for a sponsor for the Three Bears Party? Red Riding Hood. Sorry? Uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. Mm. Yes, all right. Little Red Riding Hood. Has she got a lot of money? <laughs> <laughs> no, and you've taken it all <laughs> from her. You <laughs> bastards. <laughs> uh, right, Chris, I'm going to invite you to go first. So would you please announce your new corporate sponsor? Absolutely. I, I, and this couldn't have come better for me. But I mean, as, uh, as you can tell, I, I'm slightly older than our party leader. When I was asked to join the, the Dungeons and Dragons party, I must be honest, I didn't hear much beyond the word dungeons. Um, <laughs> and Sports Direct are such a perfect fit with dungeons because the equipment they have in that place is wonderful. And that film, Fifty Shades, just helps me think what I should be buying for my dungeon. And, but, um, anyway, uh, so as you see, Sports Direct are a perfect party for dungeons uh, and the other things. Um, and we will be working hand in hand, cup together. Um, and, well, let's just say it's going to be a perfect partnership. <laughs> Thank you for that, Chris. How did you get the job? <laughs> Beats me. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, three Bears Party, any comments on this new sponsorship deal? Sounds good. <laughs> We're just afraid that your treasurer will be too tied up to actually attend to public matters. <laughs> if he does, we'll whip him into shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, the party whip should be in Parliament, not six feet underground. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, Alistair, it's now your turn. Would you please introduce your new party sponsor? Yes, now on the face of it, the uh, Little Red Riding Hood Corporation that we are looking to get sponsorship from, May sound quite a controversial decision, but uh, she is known as the kind of wolf of Wall Street, and, uh, and she certainly does have some pretty big checks, certainly. My, what big checks she does have. So uh, we are looking to get serious backing. Uh, we do have other sponsors as well, uh, looking to promote our natural living and healthy lifestyles with Ready Breck and, and Robinson's. Those Seville marble oranges are just fantastic. So we think it kind of fits quite well in her hamper of Little Red Riding Hood, and that should all tie in quite nicely with all the sponsors together in one basket. Don't mention tying up, it gets Chris excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, thank you very much, teams. Uh, the scoring for this one is a bit different. I'm going to give you the opportunity, as you have all this new money, to bribe the chairman. Um, so I'm going to give you each a piece of paper. And you can write down how much you're going to bribe me. And whoever writes down the best bribe wins. Don't let Chris write on a bit of paper, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you now, Gareth, it's a very poor play. <laughs> <laughs> very poor play. Uh, right, so Gareth has pledged all my love. That's <laughs> 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 Brian has pledged biggest bowl of porridge laced with special sugar, but you'll need a really big microwave. Um, well, as Gareth was so pathetic, I think you win. Yay! <laughs> uh, right, we have last we have reached election time. Before we take the vote, I'm going to give each of the party leaders a chance to make their closing statement in a last ditch attempt to win some votes. Uh, Brian, you are going to have a chance to go first. So, why should people vote for the Three Bears Party? Are we the right party to lead this government? Well. We have had uh, enormous uh, support from uh, many uh, leaders worldwide. I've had messages of support from just amongst uh, a few people here, uh, Michael Fallon and Robert Mugabe. So with that, sort of <laughs> <laughs> with that sort of party, vote for us and get your oats. That's what I say. Thank uh, just, you very just, much. Just, sorry, there's just one just, last. Just, in the spirit of the yeah. party, I think we should just try all options. Yeah, actually. sorry, my um, chair's a little bit yeah, hard. Sorry, Do you mind yeah, if I just you try you yours? Yeah, no, 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 I no, just no, see no, if it's no, a little no, bit softer. One. I'll, I'll no, try this one's too soft. I'm just going to No, I don't like it. No, I'll get back. You go there. Hang on, I'll go around. I'll go around. Just talk about that. That's not fair, you made him walk the furthest. Yeah, that's well, exercise. It's, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I need it, it. So, to, to ethnically cleanse from more wombles. I need to get it. <laughs> there we go. Has everybody, oh, no, this everybody is not like this. No, See, we just want everybody to be happy, that's all. Yes. No, welcome to the new party leader, Matthew. Well, <laughs> whoa, whoa, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad, it's not bad. No, no, no. <laughs> it's all right. I'll fight you for it. Come take, on. Take a seat, take a seat. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Gareth, your final chance to get some votes. Why should people vote for the Dungeons and Dragons party? You should vote for the Dungeons and Dragons party because over there they're just blowing hot and cold <laughs> and furthermore on Brexit. Now, do they want a hard Brexit? Do they want a soft Brexit? Who knows, but we will deliver you the Brexit that is just right. Thank you very much, Gareth. Uh, right, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, the future of the country is in your hands. So give us a cheer if you would like to vote for the Dungeons and Dragons party. Yay! Not bad, not bad. And if you would like to vote for the Three Bears Party, Yay! Uh, there we have it. The winners are the Three Bears Party. Well done, yes. just right. Pause the celebrations, chaps. We just heard Vladimir Putin's not happy with the results. So congratulations, Dungeons. And Dragons. <laughs> Is, is this the really good-looking, sexy Vladimir Putin? Because I, I, I've got it on my Facebook account as well. Yeah, just, yeah no, it's the yeah. one that looks like Dobby the House Elf. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there we are. Much like Theresa May, our time is very nearly up. Um, so before we go, would you please thank our teams, the Three Bears Party. <laughs> And the Dungeons and Dragons party. Thank you very much for listening. Until the next time, good night.